Okay, most people won't believe this story, but it really did happen, and it was even in the news and everything. So, my mom always told me that I was too fat, even though I was one of the skinniest girls in my class. She said I had to become thinner if I wanted other people to like me, and she would weigh me every day after school and scream at me if I put on a pound. To make things worse, my mom always forced me to participate in beauty pageants because she wanted me to be the most beautiful and most perfect girl in the world. However, I hated it so much because I always came last. It was so embarrassing. But my mom believed that the reason I kept losing was because I was too fat. And that's why she stopped me from eating anything at home. And she even put a lock on the fridge. She literally tried to starve me, but it didn't work because I ended up just eating more inside my school cafeteria. When she realized that her plan wasn't working, she decided to do something terrible. One day, I got home and my mom was standing there with a weird look on her face. She told me to close my eyes and swallow whatever she put into my mouth or she would punish me worse than ever before. I knew that she wasn't joking, so although I had no idea what it was, I immediately swallowed it down. Hey, my name is Steven, and back in high school, I didn't have any friends. Most people thought I was boring because I didn't talk much, but actually, I was just shy and introverted. One day, my whole life changed. I noticed that my neighbor Thomas was struggling with his math exam. I kind of felt bad for him and gave him a small paper with all the correct answers so he wouldn't fail his exam. Then, after class, he came over to me and said, Thanks, Stephen. You are a real lifesaver. And by the way, do you want to hang out with me and Alex over the weekend? Of course, I said yes, because this was the first time I'd ever been invited to hang out with anyone. This was my chance to prove I wasn't as boring as everyone thought. And maybe I'd even make some friends. When I arrived at Thomas's house, he and Alex were already drinking beers. This was a big problem for me because I'd never drunk alcohol before. Then Thomas handed me a large glass of vodka, but I said I'd rather not drink any alcohol. Don't be such a coward, Thomas responded. Drink it or go home. I felt like I didn't have any choice. And one drink led to another, and soon I was totally wasted. After a few hours, Thomas said, Hey, my brother is a tattoo artist, and he keeps his gear in the basement. We should all get matching tattoos. I was so drunk. I said, Sure, that's an amazing idea. Then Thomas got the tattooing machine while I laid down on the couch and pulled up my sleeve, so Thomas could tattoo my arm. However, I was so drunk that I immediately passed out. And I don't remember anything that happened after that. When I woke up the next day, my face felt like it was burning. It was so painful. I went to find a mirror, and when I saw myself, I couldn't believe it. Those bastards had tattooed a Batman mask on my face. I stormed out of their house and went home, but of course everyone gave me weird looks, and I couldn't blame them because I looked ridiculous. I'll also never forget the look of horror on my mom's face when I got home. She screamed, "What have you done to your face?" I told her it was just a tattoo and I was going to get it removed, but she totally freaked out and started crying, saying my face was ruined forever. When my dad found out about what happened, he got really mad and promised me to sue Thomas and Alex and put them both into prison. I thought that was a great idea to get justice, but. I still had one much bigger problem to solve, because the next day I had a really important exam at school, and there was no way I would go there and have everyone laugh at me and my stupid tattoo. Unfortunately, my dad said it was my own fault for being stupid enough to get a tattoo, so the next day he drove me to school and practically dragged me into my class. It truly was the worst day of my life. Everyone, and I mean literally everyone, came up to me and laughed at my tattoo. My teacher even had to lock the door to our classroom because every five minutes someone would open the door, take a look at me, and start laughing. What made it even worse was that everyone was treating Thomas and Alex like heroes for giving me that tattoo. By the time I sat down for my exam, I was a mess. 
I couldn't focus on anything. So I failed the exam. So hard, I was forced to repeat the year. Since then, I had laser treatment over the summer vacation, so I look a lot better now. But I still have some scars all over my face, and you can still see the faint outline of the Batman mask. Luckily, my dad helped me sue Thomas and Alex, and their families were forced to pay me $150,000 in compensation. And the best thing was that Thomas and Alex were sent to a youth detention center for three months. It would be great to say that something good came out of all this. I'd love to tell you that the girls at my school thought I was cool because I was crazy enough to get a Batman tattoo, but that wasn't the case. I was nothing but a huge joke. Not just in school, but in my whole town. Even now, I can't leave my house without people pointing and laughing at me. As soon as I graduate school, I'm getting the hell out of here. I've shamed my whole family and I need a new start. I just wanted to warn you to choose your friends carefully. And don't get wasted unless you're in a safe environment with people you can trust completely. Thanks for listening. When I was a teenager, my friends always wanted to know who I had a crush on. Then I would say some boy's name so they wouldn't think I was weird. But the truth was, I didn't feel attracted to any boy or girl. I figured I just hadn't met anyone I liked yet, but the older I got the more I wondered if something was wrong with me. In the 10th grade, a boy in my class asked me if I wanted to go to the cinema with him. I said yes, but in the middle of the movie, he tried to kiss me. I always thought kissing was gross, and when his lips met mine, I almost screamed. I pushed him away saying, "Ugh, what the hell? He immediately apologized, and because he felt so embarrassed, he ended up leaving the cinema before the movie was over. It took me a few hours to process and understand what had happened, and then I felt awful. I never wanted to hurt him. So I sent him a text to explain that there was nothing wrong with him, but I just didn't like kissing. He didn't reply, though, and when he saw me at school, he turned and walked away. We never talked to each other again. When I was 16 and still not interested in dating, I tried to find out why I was so different to everyone else. I googled, why am I not attracted to anyone? And it turned out I'm not the only one who feels this way. I learned that I was an asexual and that there are many people like me who just aren't interested in having a romantic relationship or sex. Don't get me wrong. I am interested in being in a relationship, but more like a close friendship than anything physical. I get that most people wouldn't be interested in that sort of thing, though. Luckily, I found some meetups in my town just for asexual people. I've been to a few now, and I've made a lot of friends, even though I'm still not in a relationship. But it's not that important to me anyway. When I tell people I'm asexual, they sometimes think I can't love, but that's not true. I love my mom and dad, I love my dog, but I'm not able to love someone romantically. I just don't have that feeling. The only bad thing about being asexual is that it sometimes makes you feel like you don't belong. That's why it was such a relief to learn I'm not the only one. My friend Joshua is a rich jerk. We go to the same class, and whenever I study for an exam, he laughs at me and says, Bro, too bad you don't have rich parents like me, then you could relax more. This really makes me angry because my mom works two jobs and still barely makes enough money to feed me and my two sisters. I even had to get a weekend job at a call center just so I can support my family. When Joshua heard about my job, he said, I don't understand how anyone can slave away at a desk job. Well, of course, that's easy for him to say, because his parents consistently give him money to take trips all over the world. And to make things worse, he always takes four to five girls from our school with him, so they can all take endless Instagram photos and brag about their amazing life. If that wasn't annoying enough, everyone in my school leaves stupid comments like, OMG, it's great that you have set your priorities straight. Or... You know how to enjoy life. This is much better than my boring summer job. They all act as if Joshua is a genius, just because he spends his parents' money on vacations. But in reality, he's just an entitled and arrogant kid that doesn't deserve anything he has. He also told me that he could never work for somebody else because he has a problem with authority. Well... That's a nice thing to say for someone who never has to get a job and become a productive member of society. Instead, Joshua told me that he wants to just travel the world and sleep with as many women as he can. That's why I hate him. 
He knows exactly how poor my family is, and he consistently reminds me that he will have a much easier life than me. He will probably end up like this guy, Dan Bilzerian, who inherited a bunch of money and now brags about how much better his life is compared to most other people. I'm so sick of rich kids. Another joke that Joshua came up with last week was that his first car is better than any car I'll ever own. Right now, he drives a BMW X5, but he said he will get a sports car from his parents as soon as he successfully graduates high school. I know this sounds bad, but I really hope his parents go broke and lose all their money. Because it's so unfair that an asshole like Joshua has such an easy life while the rest of us need to keep working so hard for so little money. However, I don't think his parents will go broke anytime soon. So instead, I have to somehow build my own successful business and become richer than him and his stupid parents. Once I've done that, I'll go meet him again and tell him that now he is poorer than me. I must take revenge for all of those years that he humiliated me and made fun of me. That's the only way I can find peace with myself. Anyways, I'd love to hear about your opinion on this topic. So please, leave a comment and tell me how you would handle the situation. Hey, I'm George, and I went to school with someone who became really famous. Like, Chris Brown type famous. I can't tell you his real name, but if I did, you'd know who he is straight away. I'll just call him Simon for now. We were best friends for years and always hung out after school. We weren't very popular, but we didn't care. We were too busy playing video games. However, Simon had an amazing voice. And when he sang at our high school Christmas concert, a lot of girls suddenly liked him. I mean, he is quite good looking. But nobody noticed until he sang The Way You Look Tonight. When he was 17, Simon appeared on a talent show on national TV. The prize was a massive recording contract with a boy band. I wasn't surprised when he won and became the lead vocalist. I can't say the name of the band, but I guarantee you've heard of them. It was nuts. Simon dropped out of school to be in the band, so we didn't hang out playing games anymore. I didn't blame him. Why would he need to talk to a loser like me? He was touring all over the world, doing concerts in huge arenas with girls screaming his name. While he was off having an amazing time, I stayed in school and graduated but I had no idea what I wanted to do next. Do I envy Simon? Of course! He's so successful, and he didn't even have to work for it. I mean, he, he just signed up for a TV show, and his natural talent and good looks got him through. Overnight, Simon went from being a nobody to making millions of dollars. He makes more in a month than most people do their whole lives, and all he has to do is sing a few dumb songs while I'm working in a burger joint at weekends just to make a few bucks. I know I should be happy for him. He's my best friend and I want him to do well. But every time I go on Instagram and see his posts, I compare my life to his and it sucks. I guess I'm your typical confused, lazy teenager. I don't know what to study and college is an expensive mistake if I don't make the right choice. I'd much rather tour the world and sleep with groupies. But I'm not Simon. Since he became famous, Simon has only been back to my house once. I guess it's hard to find time for your friends when you're a pop star. We didn't have time to play any video games because Simon had a gig later that day. But he told me all about his crazy new life. He's got girlfriends all over the world, just about one in every city. When he talked about how much he loved singing on stage, you could tell how happy he was. I felt like the world's worst person, because instead of being happy for my friend, I just felt jealous. When he asked me how things were going, I choked, because there was nothing great going on in my life. And after he left, I felt like such a loser. I wanted to curl up and die. But then something inside me snapped. I realized I had to up my game and make something out of my life. I had wasted years playing video games with Simon when I could have learned programming and written my own games. I mean, I'll probably never make as much money as Simon, but money isn't everything. I can still have a successful career, and I don't want to be like him with a girl in every town anyway. I'd much rather find one special person to love and then start a family together. I believe that progress in life is like going to the gym. You practice something every day 
and as long as you keep working on it and don't give up, you will make progress and improve your life. That's why, since Simon came round, I've been practicing programming for at least two hours a day. I'm still a beginner, but at least I'm getting somewhere. I feel like I'm at the start of a great adventure. I don't know where it will take me, but I know it will be somewhere interesting and exciting. I just hope that when I'm old, I'll be able to look back and say I really did something with my life, instead of wasting time and energy comparing myself to other people and playing video games.